Jin. I'd like to say good morning to journalists in Germany, France, Italy, Spain, UK, Brussels, and Austria who are watching this by webcast. And we are broadcasting today's event live over the internet. So welcome to you too. Um, when journalists write about Huawei these days, they tend to describe us as telecoms equipment company Huawei, or maybe smartphone manufacturer Huawei. And we are absolutely both of those things. But we're also uh, a company in the IT space, in artificial intelligence, in chipsets, and intelligent computing. And that's what today is about. Huawei launched its AI strategy at Huawei Connect last year. Today, we're going to give you an update on that. And to do that, please welcome to the stage Rotating Chairman and Deputy Chairman of the Board, Mr. Eric Hsu. Mr. Hsu. Ladies and gentlemen, friends from the press, analysts and friends, good morning, good afternoon. Because we have more than 100 friends from the press joining us online. Uh, they come from Europe, so good morning to you. Many of you may have attended the Huawei Connect conference last year in Shanghai. At the event, I officially announced Huawei's AI strategy as well as our full stack all scenario AI portfolio. I also outlined 10 major changes that we need to make if we hope to make AI more pervasive and accessible. We hope all industry players will work together to drive changes and close the gap between AI-related reality and AI-related potential. And while we have been working hard on several of those areas, so today the launch event is about an update of our latest progress. First of all, please allow me to brief you on our AI strategy, which has five parts that I introduced last year. First, we invest in AI research. We set up a no us arc lab. We develop fundamental ML capabilities in computer vision, natural language processing, and decision inference, focusing on data and power efficiency, namely using less data, computing, and energy. Security and trustworthy is another area of focus. Automation and autonomy is the third one. So that's the responsibility of our NOAA's ARC laboratory. The second part of the strategy is to build a full stack AI portfolio adaptive to all scenarios, including both standalone and cooperative scenarios between cloud, edge, and the device. We also aspire to provide abundant and affordable computing power, an efficient and easy to use AI platform with all our full pipeline services. The third pillar is to cultivate talent and open ecosystem, working extensively with global academia, industries, and partners. Fourthly, we will strengthen the existing portfolio by bringing AI mindset and techniques in all Huawei's products and solutions to create a greater value and make them more competitive. The fifth part of it is to drive operational efficiency by using AI to automate high volume repetitive tasks for better efficiency and quality. Last year, I also launched our full stack all scenario AI portfolio by taking today's opportunity, I'd like to reiterate and take you through um, this full stack all scenario portfolio. The portfolio covers all development scenarios, including public cloud, private cloud, edge computing, IoT industry devices, and consumer devices. That's what all scenario is about. And the full stack is from the technical or functionality perspective. That includes the chips, chip enablement, training and inference framework, as well as application enablement. There are a couple of areas for full stack. One is um, the ascent IP and the chip series, which is based on a unified scalable architecture. In this series, we have uh, a Santa Max, Mini, Light, Tiny, and a Nano. The other part is CAN. 
the chip operators library and highly automated operators developing the tool kit. The third part of it is MindSpool, a unified training and uh, inference framework for device edge and cloud. The other part is application enablement, which is model ops, uh, ours, including full pipeline services, hierarchical APIs, and pre-integrated solutions. So last year, we launched our AI strategy as well as the full stack uh, um, old scenario AI portfolio. Also last year, we launched our very first AI processor, a Ascend 310, primarily used for edge computing and uh, inference. Today, Ascend 310 has been widely adopted in a range of uh, uh, scenarios. There are three primarily series uh, based on Ascend 310, uh, MDC, Mobile DC. The other is uh, Atlas, including Atlas computing, uh, AI accelerator modules, and servers. The other is the cloud services. Today, uh, we MDC solutions are widely used in our partnership with the car makers to address intelligence and automation needs. The Atlas cars and the servers are widely used by our partners and they used for smart transportation and smart uh, power. It's also used uh, widely for uh, heating and the wastewater processing that is uh, closely linked with people's livelihood. Cloud services based on Ascend 3.1, OCR, video analysis. There are more than 50, plus, 50 APIs related to this based on Ascend uh, 3.10, providing cloud services. The uh, daily API calls has exceeded 100 million, and this figure is expected to hit 300 million by the end of this year. At the same time, we also launched Moodle Us, a full pipeline um, model production services. It provides model development services spanning the full pipeline from data collection, model development to model training and the deployment. Today, um, there are more than 4,000 training tasks per day for a total of 32,000 training hours. 85% are related to visual processing, 10% uh, uh, audio processing, and 5% are related to machine learning. And today, there are more than 30,000 developers using our model us. Today, what I'm going to show you is Ascent 910, the industry's most powerful AI processor. In October last year, we actually disclosed the tech specs of uh, Ascend 910. Today, I will show you more about how it actually performs in tests. Test the results show that Ascend 910 processor delivers on its performance goals. For half precision floating point operators, Ascend 910 delivers 256 teraflops, and for integer precision calculations, delivers one uh, 550. 12 tera ops. More importantly, its max power consumption is only three, uh, 310 watts, much lower than its planned specs. Under same conditions, its computing power is twice as the mainstream benchmark. A 910 performs much better than we expected, and better than our design specs. It's now already used for AI model uh, training. In a typical training session based on ResNet 50, the combination of Ascend 910 and MindScore trains AI models about two times faster than other mainstream training cars using TensorFlow. Ascend 910 can train 1,802 images per second, while existing uh, our benchmark is 965 uh, images per second. As for the key technologies, we have a video clip to give this you more information. This is Ascend 910. DaVinci architecture-based AI cores are the compute engine. In addition to scalar and vector units, AI core integrates 3D cube computing engine. It completes 4,096 Mac Ops per cycle. 
more than two orders of magnitude larger than what CPUs and GPUs can deliver. Ascend 910 has 32 cubes inside, providing 256 teraflops. Not just a powerful AI coprocessor, Ascend 910 is a highly integrated SOC comprised of CPUs, DVPP, and task scheduler as well. Ascend 910 has self-managing capability that can minimize data interchange with the host. By eliminating this overhead, the unprecedented computing power can be fully utilized. Highly efficient communication mechanism is another key for a training system. Ascend 910 integrates HCCS, PCIe, and Rocky. The self-developed HCCS can deliver 240 gigabits per second for each port. Latest PCIe guarantees twice the throughput compared with previous generations. Lastly, on-chip 100G Rocky enables direct data exchange between multiple nodes, which improve training cluster performance and flexibility. High computing power, high level of integration, and ultra-fast interconnection together build Ascend 910 that is the world's most powerful AI processor. Ascend 310 and uh, three, uh, Ascend 910 are only a start. Moving forward, we continue investing in AI processors to meet different needs of a broad range of uh, scenarios. There are a couple of uh, scenarios for edge computing. Based on Ascend 310, our plan is to launch Ascend 320 in 2021. The existing MDC is uh, based on Ascend 310 currently used for autonomous driving. In the future, for large-scale commercialization, we'll be launching Ascend 610 and 620. For AI training, today we officially launched Ascend 910. In the future, we are going to launch Ascend 920 so that we can come up with a whole series of AI processors for different scenarios so as to provide uh, powerful and uh, affordable computing resources for research and industrial uh, adoption. Today, I would also like to announce the release of MindSpore, our full scenario AI computing framework. We know AI computing frameworks are critical to making AI application development easier, making AI applications more pervasive and accessible, and ensuring uh, privacy protection. That's where AI application development uh, framework comes in. For that purpose, at Huawei Connected last year, we announced three development goals for our AI framework. Um, easy deployment, which substantially reduces training time and costs, efficient execution, which uses least amount of resources, and most importantly, it needs to be adaptable to all scenarios, including device, edge, and cloud. Mindsport marks significant progress towards all the three dimensions. It is adaptable to all scenarios across all devices, edge and cloud, and provide on-demand cooperation between them. Its AI algorithm as code design concept allows developers to develop advanced AI applications. That means people working on algorithms do not necessarily have to have strong coding capabilities. So that would bring e uh, much ease of use and trade models much more quickly through framework innovation as well as co-optimization of a mind spool and ascend processors, our solution can ensure stronger performance and more efficient execution. Mind spool does not only support Ascend 910, it also supports other GPUs and the CPUs or other processors available in the industry. Many people have asked me the question, now that we have uh, TensorFlow or PyTorch, what's the point of a mind sport that Huawei works on? I've been telling these people. That till now, none of the existing frameworks can support all scenarios. Well, if you look at Huawei's portfolio, we cover devices, edge, and the cloud. Furthermore, these days, privacy protection has become more important than ever. And the support for all scenarios is essential for enabling secure, pervasive AI. This is also a key component in our MindSpore framework. 
resource budget environments can be big or small as needed. Mindspool supports them all. Mindspool also helps ensure user privacy because it only deals with the gradient and the model information that has already been processed. It doesn't process the data itself. So private user data can be effectively protected even in cross-scenario environments. In addition, Mansport has a built-in model protection technology to ensure the models are secure and trustworthy. In addition, Mansport is built on a concept called AI algorithm as code. This design concept allows developers to develop advanced AI applications with ease and train their models more quickly. In a typical neural network for natural language processing, Mansport has 20% fewer lines of code um, than existing frameworks on the market, and it helps developers raise their efficiency by at least 50%. Through Framework innovation as well as co-optimization of Mindspool and Ascend processors, our solution can help developers more effectively address complex AI computing challenges and the need for a diverse range of computing power. This results in stronger performance and more efficient execution. In addition to Ascend processors, Mindspool also supports other processors as well. And we also have a Mindspool is developer-friendly AI framework. Of, uh, Adopting Mindspore. an AI algorithm as code concept, Mindspool enables a host of new technologies including source-to-source -source automatic differentiation, which vastly outperforms graph and operator overload. Mindspore can achieve differential expression and compiler optimization for any operator and automatic generation of inverse operators. This makes model development as easy as ABC. As data sets and model scales grow ever larger, parallel processing is inevitable regardless of how time-consuming and difficult it is to implement. Mindspore is here to help, though. By simply defining a standalone model, Mindspore can automatically implement multi-machine hybrid parallel operations. Mindspore also supports both static and dynamic graphs, allowing for seamless switching with only one statement, making property debugging easy and efficient. Mindspore provides Ascend Native, a runtime efficient technology to maximize the computing power of Ascend chips. In the host device model, interaction between the CPU and GPU creates large memory and data overhead. Mindspore controls and executes the entire neural network model training on the chip, reducing interaction with the host CPU and improving training speeds. Existing distributed training models introduce central controls to find gradient synchronization points. Mindspore instead uses point-to-point -point distributed gradient aggression and completely eliminates control overhead. Software and hardware are optimized to map different types of operators to their optimal computing unit and data layout, achieving exceptional performance. With Mindspore, Mathematician and researchers are being given a brand new and invaluable tool that makes theoretical exploration and innovation easier and more efficient. In order to drive AI application, and in order to encourage the entire industry to build Mindspore into a real all scenario computing framework. Mindspore will go open source in the first quarter of next year so as to help every developer and to encourage, encourage every uh, developer to participate. With today's launch of Ascend 910 and Mindspore, Huawei has unveiled all the key components of our full-stack all-scenario AI portfolio, as you might be aware. At the curing, um, Ascend and Light is already used for curing 980, uh, um, used in Honor and uh, Nova phones, and uh, Ascend Tiny. We're going to curing 990 which Richard Yu will be launching at IFA this year. 
gearing 990 is based on uh, has neural processing units around a standard tiny and a, a, a standard uh, light. So last year we promised a full stack all scenario AI portfolio, and today we delivered. This is a new milestone for Huawei. It's also a new start. We look forward to working together deeper, deeply with the partners around the world to build a pervasive AI to benefit every individual, every home, every organization. We also hope all partners can work together with Huawei to promote the development of AI so that the AI can benefit a society. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. <clears throat> the, um, it's time to turn the conference over to you for your questions. Uh, we're going to move some tables onto the, onto the front here. Uh, so just while we're doing that, let me talk about the process for Q&A. Um, we will take questions from domestic Chinese media and then international media. Um, when Raise your hand. Right hand is okay. Left hand is okay. We'll get a microphone to you. If you just tell us your name and the title you're from in your question, please restrict your questions to one per person. We don't have enough time for everybody to get a question. And we will, from time to time, introduce questions from overseas uh, audiences today. Is that okay? Okay. So um, I'd like to invite back to the stage, please, Mr. Eric Shu. Um, I'd like to invite Jack Ja. Jack is the general manager for cloud service. Uh, Dang Wang Xiong, uh, chief strategy architect. And finally, Ai Wei, uh, who's the chipsets fellow, hardware fellow in Bali. So for the Q&A, uh, we will conduct it both in Chinese and English. Um, Ken Wong will be the interpreter uh, in a consecutive manner. So. Um, Bear with us as we go through this process. Are we okay? Ready? Okay, uh, I'm looking for hands, right hands. Lady in the front, CCTV. Just wait for the microphone. 我是来自央视财经频道的记者张琴斯，很高兴看到华为在这个不到一年的时间里就有这么多的呃芯片和计算构架的落地。那么我想请问一下，在接下来在人工智能方面，我们有哪些具体的落地？在产业规划方面还有
Ken Hu will be sharing with you more detailed information uh, by then. As for the next steps or our plan for the AI industry, we will be promoting and uh, working on our already established AI strategy and our full stack, all scenario AI portfolio step by step. You know, all the key components have already uh, been launched. We'll continue to work on the constant iteration and the new versions. We also hope our AI-related products and solutions can gain more adoption and uh, recognition in the market from customers and the partners so that AI can benefit more people in China and uh, around the world. Okay. I'm looking for the next question. I've seen the lady in the front. Uh, we get a microphone to the lady at the front. Hi, uh, Hansa from Indian Express, India. Uh, so what will be, be what will be your AI strategy in India, especially with uncertainty of Huawei's 5G rollout in the country? Uh, India's reporter, I want to ask you about Huawei's AI strategy in India, especially with uncertainty of Huawei's 5G rollout in the country. In the AI strategy of India, especially with uncertainty of Huawei's 5G rollout in the country. Our AI strategy with 5G has no connection with Huawei. 对吧？这个五 G 是五 G，AI 是 AI。我们在印度的战略应该跟我们整体战略是没有任何区别的，就是我们基于我们这个生腾的这个处理器来开发提供的这个 Atlas 的系列板卡，以及我们的这个 Mobile DC 是能够提供给印度的这个大学啊、合作伙伴啊、企业去为他们。开发各种各样的 AI 应用，解决印度各行各业面临的问题和挑战，来创造价值。同样的来讲，我们基于这个生腾处理器的，无论是训练和推理的云服务，也会这个面向这个印度的市场，为印度的这个大学、研究机构、企业来利用这个 AI 的云服务，来做研究、做应用开发。以及解决问题，各行各业的问题，然后是一样的。所以说，我们是提供产品、提供服务，来更好的跟印度的合作伙伴合作，来服务于印度的这个各行各业，来这个帮助这个印度的这个各行各业来提升效率，来这个进一步的造福于这个人类。Um, our AI strategy is not necessarily tied to 5G. 5G is 5G and AI is AI. As for our AI strategy in India, it's no different from our overall strategy. Uh, we're going to develop uh, Atlas uh, cars servers based on Ascend processors as well. We're also going to work on MDC uh, products based on Ascend processors as well. Those products uh, can be provided to universities, partners, and enterprises in India as they develop industry, uh, AI applications to address industry-specific issues and challenges and to create value. Uh, similarly, uh, we have uh, training and uh, inference cloud services based on Ascend processes as well that can also be made available um, in the Indian market whereby universities, research organizations, and enterprises can use those AI um, cloud services for their research industry, uh, application development um, uh, needs so as to address the requirements and the challenges of uh, different uh, industry verticals. In short, we are going to provide the products and the services, and we are going to work together uh, with partners um, to address the needs of different uh, industry verticals, serve them, help them be more efficient, uh, efficient so that we together can uh, contribute to the development of society. Okay. The lady in the black and white blouse in the front row. Uh, hello, first news reporter. 
，其实这个生酮九幺零是在去年的上海全年街大会上发布的，那到现在呃，基本上过去大概十个月的时间，呃，在这段时间我们也知道有一些外部或者是内部的因素，呃，我想呃问一下这一块会不会影响到？呃，今年华为整个 AI 战略的一个节奏。另外，小徐总，您刚刚提到了一个呃 AI 在自动驾驶里面的一些呃应用，我想了解一下最新的华为在自动驾驶领域的一个进展。谢谢。哎，大家都知道我们在五月四。先翻一下。嗯、um, ，Actually, a s c e n t Nine Ten was already uh launched at Huawei Connect uh last year. It's already ten months during which. There have been quite some internal and uh, external factors. So my question first is、um, whether those factors have affected the speed of Huawei's AI strategy execution.、Uh, if yes, how? And、uh, you also mentioned, Eric, just now that AI is being used for autonomous、uh, driving. So what is the progress for Huawei in autonomous driving? 应该来讲，这个五幺六的事件对华为整个 AI 战略的这个推进。以及 AI 相关产品的这个研发与这个商业没有任何影响。呃、uh, ，I think the incident on May 16th、uh, has had a no、uh, impact on the execution of Huawei's AI strategy and also the R&D and the commercialization of AI related products。尽管这个外部环境这个发生了很多变化，但是我们整个 AI 的战略。以及我们 AI 产品的研发和商业，应该可以说稳步有序的这个开展和推进，也达到了我们预期的这个这个效这个结果，然后也按期完成了我们的计划。Even though there has been many changes in the external environment,、um, our the execution of our AI strategy, the R&D and the commercialization of Huawei's AI products. Have been、um, going steadily and uh, orderly, um, um, also re,、uh, living up to our、uh, original plan and expectations. 在自动驾驶方面来讲，应该从去年我们发布了我们跟这个奥迪合作的这个这个视频和合作的成果以后，我们整个在这一块的这个投资应该是加大了。As for autonomous driving, since we launched our joint、uh, research results with Audi,、uh, we have、uh, stepped up our investment in that area. 就是我们这个把我们 M D C 这个跟所有的车企合作，来支持和帮助车企来开发智能驾驶或者智能智能驾驶的解决方案。当然，走向完全的无人驾驶有个过程，但是一步一步的走向智能驾驶是可行的。We also work together with all、uh, car makers on MDC products. We support and help them、uh, to come up with autonomous driving solutions. Of course, it's still some way uh, um, uh, to go before we reach fully autonomous driving. But I think it's possible that we can get there step by step. 当然，我们自己也在开发一个这个自动驾驶的这个解决方案。我们我们用我们这个自动驾驶的解决方案。跟这个车企合作，然后在我们这个合作的这个车上来展现我们整个自动驾驶解决方案的这个能力和体验。呃、uh, ，We also develop autonomous driving solutions ourselves, which we take and work together with our、uh, car OEMs. So for those co-designed cars,、uh, we can demonstrate the autonomous driving capabilities and、uh, experience. 所以我们定位我们在整个未来的这个自动驾驶、电动汽车的这个产业里面，我们作为一个增量部件的提供商，为此我们专专门成立了一个叫 I O S 的这个 B U 来推进我们这个业务的这个向未来的发展。呃、uh, ，When we look at the future autonomous、um, electric cars, we position ourselves as a provider of incremental components. For that purpose, we have、uh, set up a new business unit called Intelligent Automotive、uh, Solutions, so as to drive the progress of this business. Our vision is to fully use our ability to solve the problem of autonomous vehicles and our whole scope of solution, and to work together with the car companies to 
真正实现这个自动驾驶。Um, our vision is to leverage our AI capabilities and our full-stack all-scenario uh, AI portfolio, working together with the car makers to really deliver on autonomous driving. Thank you. Uh, Kasim from Sri Lanka Daily Financial Times. You spoke about adoption, uh, great adoption of AI. Uh, is Huawei satisfied with the level of adoption in the market? If not, three, can you list three things that you would like from the customer side for greater adoption? Uh, 应该是满意的。我要说不满意的话，他们都有意见。I would say we are satisfied because if I say we are not satisfied, many people would have a different opinion on that. Thank you. Um, I want to come to the lady in the white blouse at the back on the edge. Thank you. 你好，我是二十一世纪经济报道的记者。啊，我有一个问题是，因为今天华为宣布把这个呃AI计算框架开源，然后这个最重要的就是一个生态的建设。那这一方面，像谷歌、Facebook，他们已经投入了非常久。那
。第三个领域上，其实我们一直有一个使命，要让开 AI 的这个开发尽可能简单、简单、最简单。Thirdly, we have had a mission to ourselves. We want to make AI developments as simple as possible. 实事求是来讲，现在 AI 还是要靠这个专家玩的事情。我们我去年也讲过了，我们希望通过我们打造的这个这个 Model Arts 这个全流程这个模型生产服务，能够让普通的工程师也能够进行 AI 应用的开发。如果我们 Model Arts 真正能够实现我们的使命，那我们对我们的生态的建设将有巨大的支持。Um, if you look at the reality today, um, AI is still a game for um, experts. As I mentioned uh, last year, we have uh, model arts, our full pipeline uh, model production services. The idea is to uh, enable ordinary engineers uh, to be able to develop AI applications. If model arts can truly deliver on that mission, that will, uh, that will contribute hugely to the development of uh, our ecosystem. 补充一下，第四个，呃，我们去年也提到，人工智能能不能够真正的发展起来，有一个很重要的因素，应该是企业市场能不能够发展起来，或者说能不能够有更多的企业和行业去采用人工智能。嗯、um,。As we said uh, last year, uh, whether AI can truly take off, there are a couple of important uh, uh, factors, one of which is whether the enterprise market would take off, or in other words, whether there would be more enterprises and uh, industries to adopt AI. From the perspective of AI and companies, the whole artificial intelligence is still in the very early stage. The Huawei company has a more powerful and strong business interest. 这也是我们打造生态很重要的一个这个有利的方面。When we look at the industry or enterprise adoption of AI, I would say AI today is still in a very early stage. Huawei has quite comprehensive and a strong enterprise business. That's also another advantage we have as we build out our AI-related ecosystem. 开过来讲，生态的这个打造。非常这个挑战，也非常关键。但是华为会利用我们端网络啊、端电源和云这个业务的优势，和我们全站全场景这个 AI 解决方案的优势，去应对这个挑战，这个真正把这个生态把它打造起来。我们也只有把生态打造起来，我们全站全场景这个解决方案才更有生命力。嗯、um,。To recap a little bit, uh, we know it is very challenging and also very critical <coughs> to develop an ecosystem. We are going to rely on adv our advantages um, of a comprehensive portfolio spanning device, edge, and cloud, and also leverage our full stack, all scenario uh, AI portfolio to address that challenge head on and to work. On the ecosystem, and only when the ecosystem truly takes off, the all uh, scenario full stack uh, portfolio can deliver value. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to take a question from the UK, and it comes from Chris Kelly, who is from Total Telecom in the UK. Will the Ascend 910 AI processor be made available in the UK? If so, when can we expect to see it available? 呃，这是线上来自于英国记者啊啊、嗯、，Total Telecom 啊、嗯、这个杂志的问题。嗯，这个嗯，升腾九幺零会在英国市场推出吗？如果推出的话，大概是什么时候推出？呃，我我们这个期望在英国推出，然后这个具体时间我还没有这个想过，但是我认为我们的 AI 九幺零，无论是这个基于升腾九幺零的这个 Atlas 这个板卡。或者服务器，然后以及基于这个深腾九幺零的云服务，来帮助这英国的这个大学科研机构进行 AI 研究和 AI 的应用开发，是绝对有价值的。Um, I hope we can have um、uh, a Center 910 uh, based product and services launched in the UK. 
And uh, I have not uh, um, thought about a specific timeline for that, but I do believe um, uh, Send 910 uh, based uh, Atlas series for both accelerator uh, uh, cars and the service, as well as Ascend based cloud services can truly deliver value um, to help universities and uh, uh, research organizations to do AI related research or work on AI related applications. Okay. I'm going to come into this group to the gentleman in the front in the black jacket. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Dong Nguyen from uh, Tech Times, Vietnam. So I have uh, two questions for uh, Huawei. Uh, question number one is, as uh, Mr. Eric, Eric you mentioned that uh, you had the uh, SN uh, Nano and SN Tiny, uh, you can share about the uh, detail of the, uh, this chip and and uh, what is the product that applies this chip in the future? And question number two is when the commercial products that you as an uh, I-10 will launch in Vietnam. Thank you. Uh, 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 uh,这个Nano来我们原来是想应于这个穿戴设备,对吧?这个现在的这个用Nano这个IT的这个产品还没有推出来。Tiny会在我们麒麟999年上这个使用起来,再来支持未来我们用麒麟999的过程智能争端。Currently, uh, our plan is to use um, Ascend Nano for smart uh, wearables. Uh, right now, there is uh, no uh, product uh, launched that is based on the Ascend Nano IP. And for Ascend Tiny, um, it will be used uh, in Kirin 990 and uh, accordingly in a whole range of uh, smart devices powered by Kirin 990. <laughs>这个就是在云服务方面已经可以覆盖的这个覆盖越南 We are going to have uh, cloud services for both um, inference and uh, training uh, based on uh, Ascend uh, 910. Uh, currently, we already have two international nodes. One is Singapore, the other is Hong Kong that can cover Vietnam. In other words, we can have uh, cloud services based on a sense 910 already covering the Vietnam market. Thank you. Okay. I want to come to the lady on the, on the side of the room, on the front row with the white T-shirt.谢谢Deepthead记者 uh, you mentioned that Huawei now is in a new stage <coughs> for its AI uh, business. Um, I want to know whether that would mean Huawei's chipset strategy might change 
At this year's Huawei Analyst Summit, Huawei mentioned uh, that on the one hand, you want to have a self-control while also embracing open collaboration. And Huawei does not have the plan or intention to uh, develop a, a chipset as a standalone uh, business. So I want to ask, under what circumstances um, Huawei would consider uh, taking a chipset as a standalone uh, business? whether the new stage for AI would be such a, 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 a timing. We are willing to uh, our, strategy, uh, our strategy is and will be the same. Um, a, a sense series of uh, processors will not be uh, provided to the market uh, standalone. Rather, uh, they are going to be embedded into our um, acceleration cars or service or cloud services. Uh, in addition, we also are open to um, discuss partnerships uh, with the AI chipset development companies so that uh, their uh, chipsets of uh, various kinds can be possibly used for different types of edge computing scenarios. So, AI Therefore, uh, it's not going to happen where AI chipset will be positioned as a standalone uh, business, and it's not uh, a new stage from that point of view. Okay. I'm looking to the international side. The gentleman on the front on the, on the edge. My name is Hamada from Tokyo, and uh, I have a question, not on AI, but on smartphone business. Is that okay? <laughs> okay, you can ask. Thank you. Uh, two months ago, Mr. Ren Fei said that the, in this room, Huawei anticipates smartphone sales this year could drop 40% with, compared with last year due to the U.S. sanctions. Could you tell us whether the prospect unchanged? Uh uh, maybe that was a forecast under possibly a worst scenario, uh, a worst case scenario. Um, now the situation is uh, much better than what was uh, uh, forecasted. But but it could happen that uh, the business could be um, more than 10 billion U.S. dollars less than expected. And that's only for smart devices. Thank you. Go to the gentleman in the glasses, and then we'll come to you. Front row. Um, um, the question is, uh, what is the rough pricing point of uh, Ascenda 910? We know uh, NVIDIA's one, uh, V100 is priced at about uh, 10,000 US dollars per unit, and uh, there is also a market price for uh, TPU V3. So what about Ascenda 910? Um, the uh, price um, will not be very high, but it's not uh, uh, decided. Okay. <laughs> let, let me clarify. Um, the price point for Ascend 910 will not be higher than those uh, uh, offerings, but it's not finalized yet. 
Um, we've got a question from um, Ormi uh, in Belgium, in Brussels. <laughs> Uh, the European Commission has put a strong emphasis on ethical AI and released a set of guidelines and recommendations earlier this year in their pursuit to maintain ethics in AI. To what extent is Huawei also bearing in mind the ethics of AI when launching open source platforms and new AI technologies? 欧洲欧盟委员会他们就非常强调跟AI相关的这个道德伦理的问题 这个不仅仅是AI的伦理问题，应当是说这个信息技术发展到今天，或者人类社会的技术发展到今天，整个技术伦理的道德问题，啊，是一个巨大的争议。啊，我们注意到欧盟，还是欧洲在这个方面持续
uh, have uh, different stages when it comes to their economic developments, uh, their history, and uh, their culture. Therefore, they may come up with a different understanding around what is harmonious coexistence. That is a situation and a reality uh, that people have to bear in mind and respect when we have a technical uh, ethics uh, discussions, uh, bearing in mind the differences of a timing, of a geographies, and uh, of a specific, uh, specific uh, 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 situations. 据说英国有五十多万个摄像头，但是在德国和其他国家是很难被接受的，在中国也是可以接受的，所以这就是差异，这种差异还很多。To give you one example, uh, a very typical AI application is a uh, computer vision and uh, uh, um, and a video surveillance. Uh, surveillance. Um, this is something that is uh, accepted in the UK. It is uh, said there are more than 500,000 cameras on the street in the UK. It's also accepted here in China, but it's definitely not something uh, that people accept in Germany or other European countries. That's a very good example in terms of the differences that people should bear in mind when we talk about technology ethics. We we look forward from that point of view, um, the discussions and engagement uh, with the European Union, with the technical, philosophical, and uh, academic communities as we jointly define uh, the right moral ethics of technology uh, for the future. Thank you. Okay. The gentleman in the black shirt in the front. Hello,中央广播电视总台,央视新闻的记者。呃,有个问题要问就是,我们前几天注意到那个任总在内部的一个讲话里边讲到了钢铁是怎样炼成的一文中,提到这个,呃,人才,呃,人工智能才是大产业
the Shinchou Zi Jie Guang Er Gao Zi. Uh, we have done one thing recently that some people in the industry may not necessarily understand. We made the compensation uh, numbers of the top of PhD students uh, widely available. Some people might wonder why Huawei did that. Actually, we wanted to make everyone aware what is the value of a real talent in Huawei, and that's also a gesture of a welcoming real bright minds to join Huawei. Um, there's one story which I shared uh, in the past. For the Da Vinci architecture used in uh, Ascender chips, um, the decision to initiate uh, that project was not a top-down uh, decision. It's actually a bottom-up decision. That's also a very good example to tell you um, how and where talented people in Huawei can play an important role. Regarding your next part of the question, whether Huawei has enough AI talent, even after 10 years' time down the road, I would still say, no, we don't have enough AI talent. But when Mr. Ren said AI is a big industry, it's not just for Huawei. AI is a big industry for the entire world. Thank you. We'll look to the gentleman in the gray jacket on the front row, third from the edge. Hi, Jordan Das with uh, NOS, a Dutch broadcaster. I think my colleague from the East Jing already uh, mentioned it. The external environment is uh, challenging. Um, the entity list though, has been delayed with another 90 days. Though, if this would be uh, enforced in the way that it is presented, um, would that slow down the way in which you could develop um, the successors, so to say, uh, of the ascent you presented today? So let's say the 320 or the 920 that are planned for 2021. And is there an emergency plan, so to say, to, uh, for instance, uh, uh, stock up parts or uh, technologies to make sure that you can keep on developing, keep on producing these kinds of chips? Thank you very much. 来自于荷兰的记者刚才第一财经的记者同时也提到了刚才您提到这个三二零和九二零预计是二零二幺新的这样的一个形式是否会带来这个路标的推迟呃华为有没有相应的这个应变的计划比如说对相应的部件和技术进行提前的这个库存确保这个下一代的芯片产品能够如期
，对我们整个这个生腾未来的这个这个这个路标的推出，不会有任何影响，也不会有任何延期。Therefore, there would be no impact. And、uh, on the future roadmap of、uh, Ascend processors, and、uh, there will be no delay of our predefined roadmap. If we clearly understand that in this situation to live and work, a little bit of preparation is not If we know that we have to be prepared for living and working under su su、uh, such circumstances for a long time, a little bit of、uh, inventory cannot help much. So, 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 Gentleman in the white T-shirt. 谢谢。那个，好像这个咱们这芯片是采用的七纳米的这个工艺是吧？我想了解一下，这个咱们是用哪家代工厂来做的？然后想呃，想想问一下，咱们呃，对这个中国的目前的这个芯片生产的这个呃设计，还有制制造这个几个环节的发展现状怎么来看？谢谢。这个问题就是是没有价值的问题。<笑> Uh, I know um, um,、uh, your current uh, <coughs> processor uses a seven nanometer uh, uh, process technology. So, which foundry helped you uh, um, uh, produce that、uh, processor? And what's your comment on China's status today when it comes to production and、uh, fabrication? Uh, fabrication. And、uh, this is a question that actually does not have、uh, much value. Nikkei Asian Review. Um, hi, I'm a reporter from Nikkei Asian Review. Actually, it's a follow-up regarding the、uh, future development of the Ascent series going forward.、Um, <coughs> I'm just wondering if you can share your current business relationship with companies like Cadence and Synopsis. Would the、um, May, 5th, uh, May 16th incident would affect your capability to design the next generation chips going forward? <coughs> Thank you very much. 呃，就是跟着啊、呃、问了一下，就是未来啊、呃、华为的这个升腾系列的发展问题。嗯、呃，我想问了解一下华为目前跟啊、呃、Cadence、Synopsis 这一类公司的啊、呃、商业合作关系如何？呃，然后在五幺六事件发生之后，会不会影响到华为下一代芯片的这个设计能力？呃，大家很清楚，这些公司都不能跟我们继续合作了。Um, as you all know, these companies、um, cannot continue working with Huawei. But there will, it will always be other alternative、uh, companies. Um, If we look back、um, ten years ago, there was basically no tools、uh, available. Still, people can design out a、uh, chipset. 但是当然对我们要挑战一点，我们肯定效率不可能有那么高了，对吧？我们干活可能没那么轻松了，但是并没有不可逾越的这个障碍。呃、uh, ，definitely there would be challenges we have to tackle. Uh, the efficiency would not be as high as past, and、uh, we may need to take on more uh workload. Uh, but this is not something or a challenge that is not,、uh, that is insurmountable. 大家想想看。Intel 七十年代就做出 CPU 了，这个好像这些公司当时还没成立。Um, looking further、um, in history, Intel already came up with the CPUs in 1970s, and the companies you mentioned、uh, just now were not even established. Thank you. I want to take a question from the journalist in Brussels, Matthew Newman of Mlex. European governments rejected the European Commission's proposal to have a Wi-Fi-based standard for connected cars, while Huawei is working with 5G networks. Is the European Union's failure to have a standard an impediment to your investment in Europe? Will Huawei continue to invest in connected car projects in Europe without a common mobile standard? Ah,、uh, 来自于比利时的啊、uh, 一个问题。
我们知道的话，现在欧洲各国的政府，他们<咳>想抵制欧洲委员会的欧盟委员会的一个决定，就是说用在车联网里面，他们想这个提议基于 WiFi， 而华为的话是基于 5G 来去做车联网。如果说欧洲面向这个车这个行业无法实现统一的标准，是否会影响到华为在欧洲车联网方面的这个投入？呃，我们肯定认为基于 5G。或者基于 V2X， 这个是这个车联网最一 C V2X 对吧？是这个最最好的解决方案。我们应该来讲，这个产业界也应这个这个继续应测试证明了这一点。Uh, from our perspective, we definitely believe 5G or cellular V2X. Is the best solution for connected cars, and that's already uh, uh, proved uh, through technology and through testing uh, done across the industry. So, we in choosing the future, should make the right And we believe the European Union will be making the right uh, decision as they uh, choose the future technologies for connecting the cars. 那是无论是 C V two X 还是 WiFi， 对华为来讲都只是这个提供一个模组而已。However, no matter is a cellular V two X or WiFi, for Huawei from business perspective, ah,、uh, is nothing more than providing a a a module. 我们既有五 G 解决方案，也有 WiFi 解决方案。We have both 5G solutions as well as Wi-Fi solutions for connected cars. 嗯，所以说这个取决于欧盟最终的决策。So it's going to be up to the、uh, final decision of the European Union. Okay, we have five minutes left, which maybe is one, maybe two questions. Lady in the front at the end. 澎湃新闻的记者，我有两个问题吧。第一个问题，就刚才徐总讲到这个今年的消费者呃手机业务这块，可能一百多亿美金这个下滑。我想问一下，有没有评估过整个公司全年一九年的整体的营收是有一个大概的预估？另外就是明年一季度这个 Mind Sport 这个开源，我想。问一下具体的开源的想法。之前鸿蒙宣布开源的时候，说要成立这个开源基金会，进行全球的全全向全球的开发者这个，就号召他们加入进行这个共同的开发生态。我想问一下这块是什么一个想法？是还是华为主导吗？还是想变成一个业界共有的这样一个这个开源架构？谢谢。From Pompei News, two questions.、Uh, Eric, you mentioned just now that、uh, Huawei's uh, uh, revenue on smart devices this year might be more than 10, bil、uh, 10 billion US dollars less than expected. So, do we have any numbers regarding the uh, estimate uh, uh, revenue for the whole company for 2019? And the second, you also mentioned that Huawei will、uh, go open source on MindSport in the first quarter of、uh, next year. Are there are more details to share here? Uh, for the Harmony OS, Huawei also said that you are going to set up an open source foundation to encourage more developers to come on board. So,、uh, any more detailed information regarding open source initiative for、uh, MindSport? Is this going to be a Huawei-dominated uh, 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 program, or is going to be uh, uh, shared uh, across the globe? Um, actually, we have already said that we will reduce 300 million dollars. But now, we think that it will be at least 300 million dollars less than the average. 但具体到多少，要看我们明年三月三十一号，呃啊，一般元我们一般是元月几前几天，呃，会基本把我们今年做的咋样发布出来，呃，你得等到那一天。Uh, Ms. Ren uh, once said uh, our uh, revenue this year might be three,、uh, 30 billion US dollars less, less than we originally planned. But it seems at the least、uh, it's not going to be、uh, that big.、Um, in terms of the、uh, specific numbers for the whole year,、um, we are going to、um, have、uh, announcements of that number often by the end of the year. So maybe、uh, you will see that number by then. 呃，我们这个全场景 AI 计算框架 m a n s p o r t 的开源策略，我们现在还没有这个想清楚
我们在二零二零年初一发布的时候，我们会同步把我们的策略发布出来。As for the open source strategy for the uh, all scenario AI uh, uh, computing uh, framework, uh, Mindspore, uh, is not uh, uh, finalized yet. Once we launch, uh, once we go open source on Mindspore in Q1 next year, we'll also launch our open source strategy uh, together with it. Okay, I want to give the final question today to Reuters at the back on the camera platform. All right, thank you, Joe. Uh, so uh, my question will be like, which are the comparable chipsets uh, from outside companies are uh, ASINT 9, 10 is going to replace? And are you being supplied uh, those chipsets at the moment, given the US ban? And does the ASINT 9, 10 and its Da Vinci uh, structure have anything to do with the ARM structure? Could you explain how ARM suspension of Business with Huawei affect your chip pipeline. Thank you. Uh, 路透社的记者，呃、uh, ，想问一下，现在华为推出的这个呃，升腾九幺零，在市场上准备替代的可比的这样的一个芯片是哪些款？然后现在的话，由于实体清单的这样的一个影响，是否会影响到它的相应的这样的一个部件的获取？然后升腾九幺零和这个 Mindspore 是不是跟这个 ARM 的这样的一个架构有怎样的关系？那华为跟 ARM 之间合作的这个目前的这种挑战，是否会影响到升腾九幺零和这个 Mindspore？ 首先，这个不存在部件获取的问题或影响的问题。Uh, first, um, there's no issue regarding acquiring the necessary components to design and develop a s a n d e r 910 and minus four. 嗯，我们这个我们升腾九幺零它是聚焦于学习的一颗芯片，啊，训练训练训练的一个芯片。Assigned uh, a s a n d e r 910 uh, focuses on uh, uh, AI related training. 市场上跟我们同类型的芯片只有两家，大家都知道哪两家。There are only two companies working on comparable chipset in the market, and I think you all know which those two companies are. 这个我们生成九幺零，这个它是个 SOC， 里面有 ARM 核，而这个 ARM 核我们是拥有这个 ARM 公司 V8 架构的永久授权。Uh, Ascender 910 is a SOC system on chip, and uh, there are ARM cores uh, built uh, in it. And Huawei has a perpetual license, architectural license of a V8 from a ARM core, ARM from ARM. So, 对我们这个芯片的发展也不受任何影响 Therefore, the development of this chipset will not be affected uh, whatsoever. Thank you. That is all the time we have for today. Thank you very much for your questions. If you have questions remaining, talk to the PR teams. We will try to get you answers. Thank you very much for coming to today's launch event. And also thank you to the friends uh, uh, of the press joining us uh, online. And I would also love to see you in Shanghai for the Huawei Connect 2019 if you are interested about Huawei's plans and the products related to AI. Thank you. Um, just before we finish, uh, there are tours downstairs to see some of the technology we saw today. Um, if you're staying here to write stories, that's fine. Otherwise, please make your way outside and you will follow the guys with instructions to bring you downstairs and who will lead the tours. Thank you very much.